um, make sure you, you study your chart. This one, don't forget to factor out the two to begin with. Okay, that would be the temptation on that. Um, difference of squares looks something like this. Um, um, let's say I had 4c squared, like that. I would go x plus 2c times x minus 2c. Because remember, you're taking the square root. If you can take an even square root and it's a difference problem, you can do it. Okay? All right, then we moved on to radical expressions. Square roots, cube roots, so forth. Um, hopefully you know your perfect roots. So you know like the square root of 100 is 10. You know, hopefully you've got all those down. Uh, what we began to do though that would complicate it was we put variables underneath the square root. And we put numbers that couldn't be squared out evenly. So let's say I have um, 75a to the 4th, b to the 3rd, and c squared. Okay, so I look at this, and I look at the number, and, I, and this is a square root. Okay, there's an understood 2 there. What can I multiply together to get 75 that I can take a root of? 25. 25. So I'm going to look at that as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Now if you need to, write them all out individually. If you don't need to and you can do it in your head, just do it that way. Okay, square root of a to the 4th, uh, square root of b to the 3rd, square root of c squared. Now remember we came up with a shortcut with our variables that works every time. So out here I've got a 5. I mark that out. That's on the outside. If I take the square root of it, it's no longer underneath the square root. The 3 has got to stay underneath the square root. I can't do anything about that 3. Then I look at this a to the 4th power. Remember there's an understood 2 there, so I go 2 times what equals 4? 2 times 2. So a squared comes out here. I don't have any left over because it gets me exactly to the 4. So nothing goes underneath here. What about this one? B, one B to the 1st comes out here, but I still have 1 left over because I can only get to B to the 2nd when I multiply. Then I come over here. What about that one? It's just C, and it's on the outside, because 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So that's your final answer. Okay, you remember doing that. Okay, you've been doing that all the way through as well. Um, if I have something like this, what's my answer to that? A plus B. A plus B. Okay, because essentially those cancel out. Okay, um, let's see what time it is. All right, then we moved on. So I don't think there was any problems with that. Remember when you, um, when you're, when they match up, you can combine them when the roots match up. Like for instance, um, like this one. And it says simplify. Okay, I've got to break that down into 4 and 3. So that's square root of 4 times the square root of 3 minus 3. That's the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Okay, this is square root of 4 is? Mm -hmm. Which I have to multiply by that 5. So it's 10 on the square root of 3 minus, what's the square root of 25? Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 on the square root of 3. You almost treat the, the roots like their variables, okay, because they match up. So I'm only looking at the coefficients in front of it. So that's going to give me a negative 5 on the square root of 3. Now, if they don't match, let's say that was a 2. You cannot combine them, okay? Um, if you're multiplying, remember you can multiply what's outside of the square roots together and what's underneath the square roots together. Uh, sometimes you might want to do that, you might want to reduce it first. Um, let's say I have 40 times the square root of, I don't know, 9. Okay, well, no, I don't want to do something that comes out even. 
um, 10, okay, square root of 10. Let's say I want to do this first, and I go, I'm, I can either do the square root of 400, or I can break this first one down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Well, what's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 10 times the square root of 10? 100. Okay, square root 10. of 100, which would be 10, so my answer is going to be 20. Okay? So you can break it down first, or you can multiply it first. Okay? Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, always remember, you cannot have a square root on the bottom of a fraction. So if I have 2 over 3 plus the square root of 2, I can't leave it like that. What do I have to do to get rid of it? Multiply by 3 minus 2. Multiply by 3 minus the square root of 2. Okay? That being said, you only have to do Florida on the bottom. On the top, you would have to distribute. On the bottom, I would have 9 minus 2, or 7. So I have 6 minus 2 on the square root of 2 over 7. If I can reduce those 3, I'm required to. Okay? What if I just had something like this? What would I multiply there to get rid of it? Just the square root of 2. Okay, what if I had that? What would I multiply? Um, it, no, because I would need to the third power underneath here to get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply it by that. Because that would give me 2 to the third power on the bottom, so the 3 in the third power would go away. Okay, mm -hmm. so think that all the way through if you have a problem like that. Okay, then we moved on to the section where you had exponents, okay? We're still working hard. Um, like this one. Now remember, the bottom of the exponential fraction is your index. The top is the squared. Now you can do this a couple different ways, okay? You could convert it and you could go, well, it's underneath 1, I know that, okay, because it's on the bottom. So it's the cube root of 27 to the second power. You can do it that way and work it all the way out. I do not think that's the easiest way to do it. I think the easiest way to do it is to take that 27 and write it with a base and an exponent. So 27 is 3 to the third power, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have 3 to the third power raised to the negative two-thirds power. What do you do to a power raised to a power? Multiply. multiply. So that gives me what, three to the negative second power, right? Because I have a negative six divided by three. Well, that's the same thing as one over three squared, or I could write it as one over nine. Much easier way to do the problem. Okay, that's why people invented those fraction exponents. Okay. Um, Let's say I've got this one. Oops. How would you suggest I do this? I'm going to flip it first. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I want to get rid of that uh, negative up there. So I'm going to write it as 27 over 8 raised to the 2 thirds power. And that exponent is gone. Then I'm going to do it my easy way, and I'm going to take these and I'm going to write them as base and exponents. So 27, we just learned, was 3 to the third power. 8 is 2 to the third power. I'm going to raise it to the 2 thirds power. So a power raised to a power, I'm going to multiply. So this is going to give me 3 to the 6 thirds power, which is the same thing as 3 squared. On the bottom, 2 to the 6 thirds power, which is 2 squared. Well, that's the same thing as 9 over 4. Okay? I, I just find that much easier than converting it to a radical, but you can if you want to. You can change it to cube roots. Does it matter if we write it three? No, I would okay. give you credit for this or okay. that. Either one of them is fine. I'm sure you can't dip in base root. 
and has a 28. Then you probably are not going to be able to simplify it. Okay, mm -hmm. there are some, I mean, they obviously have given you problems that you can do like that. Mm -hmm. But if you can't simplify it and get those base numbers the same, when you multiply it, you're still going to end up with a root on the bottom and you're going to have to get rid of it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, if it was 28, you know, what are you going to do? You, you really can't do much with it except for maybe convert it and reduce it down. Um, that took me through section 5.7, section 5.8. We're almost there. Okay, was when we were solving using roots. Um, like, for instance, let's say I have 6. Looking. 6 plus 2x on the square root of 3 equals 0. And it says solve for the x. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to um, take that 6 over. So I have 2x on the square root of 3 equals negative 6. I might divide by 2. So I have x on the square root of 3 equals a negative 3, right? You with me? All I want is the x by itself. So I'll go ahead and divide by the square root of 3. Now what would I have to do? Multiply by the square root of 3 to get it off the bottom. So on the top I have negative 3 on the square root of 3. What do I have on the bottom? Three. 3. Look, those two are the same thing as 1, so it would be negative square root of 3. If you write it like this, but don't reduce it down, you'll lose a few points, but you won't lose all the points. Okay? You all remember doing all that? Okay. Um, try this one. And this will be the last one, and then I'll give you your homework. All right, solve that. like a lot of homework, but a lot of them are pretty easy to do. Does that mean yes or no? Mm -hmm. it, you, okay. you squared both sides to get rid of the square root, which left you here. When you subtracted the 2, you got a 2y. You got a negative y. When you subtracted the 5, you got a negative 8. Well, then you're going to take the opposite of both of them since they're both negative. Okay, look. Okay, here's your homework. Now, I hesitate on this, and if it wasn't Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving, I wouldn't do it this way because it is a Wednesday night. And I know... I don't, Reagan, you probably have church tonight too. I'm Joseph, I don't know about you. But um, if you ever get to the point like you go, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this homework. When it is review homework, at least do some problems out of each section. Okay? Because I'm more interested in making sure you're prepared for the test. Okay? 